everyone, I'm Claire Kinsey, National Vice President of Consumer Health, overseeing women's and kids' health initiatives at the American Heart Association. I want to thank each of you for being here and joining us for the Go Red for Women's Women of Impact initiative in your local market. It's a really exciting initiative, and we're so, so happy and pleased to have you join us. I want to talk to you a little bit about a really important issue, one that aligns with our organizational priority to reduce risk in women. But I'm going to ask you to take a step back for a second and just imagine something. Imagine you're sick and you're in the hospital for treatment only to learn that some of the tests that you might be given or receive were really only tested in men. Or imagine that some of the medications prescribed that you've been taking have really only been studied in men. Unfortunately, that's the reality facing women today. Our healthcare and the treatment that we received was largely studied in men. So you may be asking, how is this possible? It's 2021. It's a great question and one that requires a little historical context. Right around the mid 1970s, women of childbearing years were effectively banned from participating in clinical trials. For a variety of reasons, conventional wisdom at the time concluded it would be safer, easier, and just as effective to study men, because how different could men and women really be? Turns out, quite a bit. But it would literally take an act of Congress in 1993 to mandate the inclusion of women in clinical trials. However, as of 2020, only 38% of cardiovascular research participants were women, and women of color are significantly less represented in research. Even in biomedical research, upwards of 80% of research animals are male. And even though it's been nearly 30 years since the 1993 NIH Revitalization Act established guidelines for the inclusion of women and diverse audiences, we still have a lot of catching up to do. Some of the biggest barriers to closing this gap continues to be awareness and perception on who can and should participate in research. It's not just for those who are sick or unwell. It's critically important that we have all women participating in all aspects of research from basic to clinical to epidemiological. So to address this in 2019, we launched Research Goes Red and our vision was really to create an initiative that would put women in the driver's seat to accelerate scientific discovery by creating the world's largest, most engaged women's health registry and research platform. In collaboration with Verily's Project Baseline, Research Goes Red was launched and is putting women at the forefront of scientific discovery by harnessing the power of cutting edge health technology to drive maximum impact and health, equitable health and well-being. This initiative is innovative and provides a platform for more women to come together in building health and well-being for themselves, as well as all women. So through Research Goes Red, participants can choose to participate through simple surveys, be notified and participate in eligible scientific studies and more. Also be the first to know when studies matching your preferences open, test new technologies to help shape the future of disease management and care, and also get exclusive access to updates, thought leaders, and community events that focus on healthy eating, physical activity, and more. Registration is also easy. It literally takes minutes and can be done by a smartphone or computer. This platform was literally designed to make participating in research available to women without having to leave home. In fact, let's watch a short video to see how you can get started and consent into Research Goes Red. I also want to share what's happening since we launched the platform. Just one year ago, we funded our first two studies, which are great examples of how women participating are informing what we study. For example, when we first launched, we surveyed women on their greatest health concerns. The number two concern was weight. And based on the demographic profile of respondents, we have a study underway, currently still recruiting from within the platform, to study weight changes during the menopausal transition. 
The second study is a social media based study designed to help address and solve for one of the biggest issues we face, and that's the lack of representation of young, diverse women in research. So this study will focus on, on determining the barrier that we need to overcome to engage specifically black and Hispanic millennial women to participate in research. As you embark on your Women of Impact journey, thank you for supporting the American Heart Association, Go Red for Women, and our goal to reduce risk in all women. You are part of our relentless force for a world of longer, healthier lives. By joining Research Goes Red and by engaging other women to join Research Goes Red, you are helping to ensure we have more women creating solutions for women. And remember, women make up roughly 51% of the U.S. population. We're not a special population. We're not a subpopulation. We're the majority population. We have a voice that is unmatched and when we use it together, there is nothing we can't accomplish. So it's time we ensure women are represented, women are counted, and women are treated. And that's the power of Research Goes Red. We get to put women in the driver's seat to accelerate scientific discovery. This is truly what it looks like to bring science to life. So thank you for being part of our mission in action and good luck with your campaign.